It's Deck Pass Live, presented by Xfinity. Again, we are here at the University of Tennessee's Allen Jones Aquatic Center. And yes, we are one day closer to the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, Japan. Again, just imagine having to look at that clock every day. It seem, may seem like it never will get here, but pretty soon, before we know it, it will be time to race in Tokyo. It's coming up so fast. I'm literally thinking of four years ago when I was still swimming, and now we're already four years later preparing for those Tokyo 2020 games. And we're here at the first Pro Swim Series stop of these 2020 Olympic year. And God, it's fast. It's been really fast. And, and I think what has surprised me is not just how the veterans are swimming, because we kind of know what to expect from them. But it's a lot of these up and comers who are making statements and saying, I need to be in the conversation of making the Olympic team. Whether they make it or not, they're, they're, they're going to be there. Right. They're asserting themselves into those events, like the Women's Hunter Backstroke. That is one of the youngest events that we've had, and we've talked about it earlier, how backstroke is just typically such a young race. Mm -hmm. But right now, having Phoebe Bacon and Reagan Smith and all these women just breaking 59 seconds on a two Friday in January. You know, it's, it's amazing. Insane. It's absolutely amazing. And I think of, I'm thinking back to like this time four years ago. We didn't really know who Lily King was at all. She was kind of racing, and we we're like, okay, she's pretty good, but we didn't know that she would be Olympic champion good in 2016. So. A lot of these men and women that you're watching right now who are just, you know, getting second, third, kind of swimming okay times, yeah. don't forget about them because they may be like Lily King was in 2016 and even like Katie Ledecky was in 2012, 2012. in May where everybody's like, okay, who is this lady? And then she like goes on a Kathleen window. Kathleen Ledecky? <laughs> Kathleen Ledecky is who she was then. Yeah. So it's really amazing. I have a lot of fun watching it because I'm like, okay, I'm going to remember that person because you never know. And I think that's what's fun about these next six months is, Who's going to be the ones to challenge the veterans? Who's going to make a statement now to say, when it comes to Omaha, if you forget about me, you're going to be in trouble? Yeah, and I feel like this year is going to be a year of youngsters running up through the ranks, seeing that trajectory for them, but then veterans holding their own, like the Allison Schmitz, the Melanie Margalises. You know, they're like, yeah, we're 29, 28 years yeah. old, but we still got it, and yeah. we're going to make the Olympics. But you talk about those youngsters who are making that trajectory as our first guest tonight. She had an amazing swim tonight in the 50 freestyle, uh, and having just a really good past uh, five, six months um, of her senior year at the University of Tennessee. And we're welcoming Erica Brown with us right now. Erica, it's so good to have you here. First of all, congratulations on your win tonight in the Thank 50 Freestyle. You so much. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So, as we said, uh, this is your home pool. You, you swim here every day where it's, you know, where about 50, 60 of you men and women. Yeah. It's pretty quiet. Um, and I bet even your dual meets that you have here probably didn't get as loud as it got tonight for your 50. I think you'd be surprised. We're a pretty loud team, but it did get very loud tonight. Um, that was a really exciting moment, just seeing my team after I finished. Um, there's nothing like that. So. Yeah, th I was reading up on you earlier. You said you'd lost love for the sport after the 2016 trials where you, you said you sort of underperformed, and now here you are heading into 2020, and you are almost the one to beat. What has it been from those four years? Is it Matt Kredich at Tennessee? What is the cohesiveness that you guys have here like? Yeah, it's amazing. It's just a combination of everything. Um, like, I had never really had that before. I was uh, Club swimming is a little different because you're kind of in your own lane and you have to figure it out yourself. But when you come to a college team, everything is about the team. And that was really big for me, um, being able to be in that environment and not just focus on myself, but help everyone else get better too. I think um, that helps my mentality in the sport and uh, makes it a lot more fun. I would imagine it's because it doesn't make it just about you. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's about something bigger than yourself. Well, yeah. let's take a look at that 50 freestyle tonight. Again, what an amazing race. You were right next to the reigning world champion, Simone Manuel. And there she is, Simone. And you've, you've been in the lane next to her before, but does it still kind of give you goosebumps and little butterflies thinking, I'm next to Simone Manuel? Yeah, it's really exciting to be able to race such great women. I mean, this is so motivating to me. And you're fourth from the bottom there, so mm -hmm. here we are at the 25, and you're kind of just about a fingertip ahead of her. Yeah. What is it? Okay, last 15, are you breathing? I 
breathe at the 35 once, and then I don't breathe at all. It's called the Tennessee finish. Woo! <laughs> one breath wonder over here. Yeah. Uh, it's the Tennessee finish. Yeah. All right, and that's, and you, you're like, yeah. 24, 57, <laughs> you're like, yes, that's good. That How is that momentum that you had from 2019 US Open carrying over into these 2020, this, it's an Olympic year, like, where's your mindset right yeah. now? Yeah. Um, well, we still have SECs and NCAAs, so I'm trying to stay focused on that, but I, I can't help but think about trials. Um, so I'm just trying to take every long course meet I have and learn from it um, and put into practice all the little things so that I can do my best at every meet. Yeah. Well, we're talking about this is your senior year at, at Tennessee, and so you've got to finish up your senior year racing for the volunteers. You've got all this racing. We actually understand you've got some big dual meets coming up yeah. in the next few days. <laughs> next week. <laughs> yeah, so are you are you someone who really likes to get up and race all the time? Oh, yeah, I love racing. Um, I think it's one of the most fun parts of the sport, um, just the competitive atmosphere of it. So I could go all day long. I think it's so much fun. Well, it's only you don't have to do like a mile every week. Oh, just, a, a mile. just a 50. 50 yeah. Just a 50 <laughs> every once in a while. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You can get up and race for that kind of stuff. From I think from Jeff and I being athletes ourselves back in the day to you, it, it's really incredible watching you be able to just your trajectory going from you know somebody that wasn't really slated to make the team in 16, and now you're not intimidated to go up to up next to those front runners. And is that just you? You're just enamored to race. It's just in your skin. Is that what it is? I think I've always been a competitor and I've always loved to compete, but I'm not going to say that I'm perfect and I've always had perfect confidence. I've struggled with that, um, but I've worked on it really hard and like that mental training part of it, um, and I think that's obviously showing up, and hopefully I can help inspire other people to do the same. Yeah. Well, if this swimming thing doesn't work out, we understand you've got a nice little side hobby that you can parlay into a few, into a few bucks here. Ladies and gentlemen, Erica Brown, makes candles. And we have one right we here have with one us. Right here. <laughs> so can you tell us about this particular candle? Yeah, so this is a cinnamon um, apple candle, and oh it has gosh. a little yeah. coloring in it to make it match. Um, what is the I, process? Like, how did, how did you get into this, and how long does this take? Like, what does it require? So, it takes, like, about an hour, okay. but I don't have a lot of free time, and I don't yeah. like to be bored, so I like to make the most of my time. Um, so I figured, I watched YouTube videos and figured out how to make candles. Um, so basically you buy the wax and you buy the scent that you want to put in it and you heat it up and when it gets to a certain temperature you can pour that in and you can pour the coloring in um, and it's kind of therapeutic. It's kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of like, I guess it's, most people say baking and gardening are therapeutic. Yeah. I guess for for you, it's candle making. Yeah, cool story. That is Thank really you. nice. You're gonna have a lot of fans now from this, and you need to open an Etsy shop. Yeah, because I'm gonna that. buy one. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, so good. and I think pretty soon you're gonna be like in malls. You're gonna be on Amazon. I yeah. think we gotta help you make up a business name. Hey, for this. can like, you the please? New Yankee I'll, candle. I'll take your help. Yeah. Thank you. EB candles or something yeah. like that because this I love it. it smells wonderful. I feel like I want to just sit in a tub like and Christmas. just relax. Yeah. yeah, it is. And just relax. With Thank this. you. This is really nice. So not only are you just like amazing in the pool, you're amazing in everything else you do. So let's just add Erica something Brown, else. To just add it to the list. You're incredible. That's really cool. How did? When did you start making candles? Um, about a year ago. I just, well, actually, my boyfriend got me into it because he's really good at making handmade things, and he's always doing something. I'm like, well, I want to do something too. So I figured out. Um, I just watched some YouTube videos, and I thought it was, would be really cool. So. So did your boyfriend start to swim because you swim? No. <laughs> like, oh, you make candles out here. <laughs> no. <now> swim. <laughs> no, we met on the swim team. Is he here supporting you? Yeah, he is, and he's swimming. Amazing. So, yeah. oh, that's great. Amazing. Yeah, that good. is really great to have he's that support. Great. That yeah, is it really is. Good. Well, it's been so fun talking to you, Eric, and learning a little bit more about you in this road to Tokyo and, and Omaha especially. So very good luck, not just with the long course racing, but this final season. Soak it all in, because we know Thank from experience, you. once it's over, you're, you're like, oh my gosh, where did, where did the college season go? You yeah. know, so remember it all, and I know you will. It's a great, it seems like a great team at Tennessee. Thank you so much, it really is. Yeah. All right, so from the sprint ladies, we're gonna take you to a highlight of the distance men. And we're going to talk about this exciting race in the men's 400 freestyle. And there's the, the top seed, Zane Grothy, who has been the top 400 freestyler the past few years, racing the guy who's an up-and-comer, Kieran Smith from the University of Florida, who is having a phenomenal past three months. And this is the last, I think, 75 meters. And for pretty much the whole race, they have been 
duking out. Yeah, stroke and, stroke. and in a 400 free, I mean, it's one thing having a race like that in the 100 free. You know you're going to be neck and neck with somebody, but to go that far, yeah. neck and neck, you are hurting at this point of a 400. It's the last 50, and there you see the finish. Oh my gosh! And I was, you're like, ah! I was holding my breath. I was like, who's going to get it? And it was yeah. Zane Grothy by a couple tenths. I tell you, Zane has got to be excited about the time, excited to get the win. You know, it's fifteen hundred dollars for him. Yeah. Three forty-eight it's, in January. That is a really good yeah. swim for him and for Kieran Smith. It really has to give him a big boost. Absolutely, he's my Gator, so I can't help but feel some <laughs> yeah. type of affinity towards him. But especially after that four hundred IM that he had last night, right? And him, we, you know, we had him on Deck Pass Live, and he's like. I don't know what I'm going to do. Is it the four free? Is it the four I am? I, what a problem to have. You know what I mean? It's a problem, yeah. but if I were Greg Troy, I'd be kind of pushing him towards that 400 free right now. I, I agree with not you on to that. Say it's, not to say that it's a kind of set in, thin but because he's got Zane, he's got Grant Schultz, yeah. a lot of people that could really step up and do well, but that swim's got to give him a big confidence booster. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, I keep saying it, this tired in January, to be able to have those swims under your belt moving into the rest of the year and be like, hey, you know what? I, when I'm at trial stepping up behind the blocks, I know that I did a 348 in January, yeah. so I'm going to be fast. And it's going to be great. Well, somebody who I think probably there are no sure things, but someone who is pretty much already penciled in for the Olympic team is Reagan Smith, the world record yes. holder in the women's 100 and 200 backstroke. She swam the 100 backstroke. This is her first time swimming the 100 back since breaking the world record at the World Championships. And so we were all anxious to see what she would do. This is right after her 200 butterfly. Yep where she got, I think, third place. And so I was thinking, okay, she's gonna put up something like 59.5 or something like that. And here she is, half a body length lead over um, Phoebe Bacon, who won US Open over right. Reagan Smith. Who just won a 58.8. So yeah. now we have two teenagers mid-season going under that 59 barrier. And there you see Reagan Smith. And I talked to her coach right after her tuner fly earlier when she went a 208, which, by the way, is it's, also incredible. But yeah, no he shot. said they are not counting any events out for the Olympic trials. It's going to be a hunter back, tuner back, tuner fly, whatever else she has on her plate. This I, woman does it all. I think she could do 200 free and get a relay spot. Yeah. That would be amazing. I, I think anything that Reagan Smith does right now, any, any race she touches could be gold. Yeah, because I agree. She really, she has that, she really does have that fighting spirit. You don't think about that by looking at her. I mean, it kind of reminds me of Missy when she was that age. And, you know, Missy turned on that game face when it was time to race, and for she was unbeatable when she had that game face Absolutely. on. Absolutely. And, Re and Reagan is so unassuming. She's the nice, cuddly, calm girl. <laughs> but as soon as she gets behind those blocks, it's game time. Don't Let mess with the Reagan. Go. World that, record. Yeah. So I was really impressed with her 58, too. I mean, that's right on her world record in January. I know. And it's like I was talking to her dad as well, and he was like, you know, she has so much on her plate right now. She has school. She has swimming. She has all these extracurricular activities, and I was like, that's good. It's a distraction because right now she probably feels the pressure yeah. of being a world record holder, not just the 100 but the 200. And, you know, going into her first Olympic trials as somebody that is slated to make the team, it's a lot of pressure as a 17-year-old. Yeah. And we forget that she's so young because – She's just so good. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to talk right now to somebody who knows all about Olympic experience. Let's bring in our next guest, hey. 2016 Hello, Olympic hey. champion Ryan Held. Thank you for, for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we were just talking about Reagan Smith, how she has all this pressure of being a world record holder, making her first Olympic team. That's probably the way you are, you're feeling now. I mean, you've been to the Olympics. You mm -hmm. know what it's like. You want to go back. Is what is the, the the pressure and your mindset now in January 2020 as opposed to where it was in January 2016 when people knew who you were but weren't really thinking Ryan Held's going to be an Olympian? Yeah, um, I'm trying to keep the same mindset, honestly. Just don't put too much pressure on myself. Just focus on kind of the, the fun of the sport, fun of swimming, and then just... I mean, if don't don't put too much weight on the swims now because if you're swimming fast now, then it's like, or I mean, if I'm swimming fast now, then it's like, oh, well, something's not right with the training. Oh, okay. But so so wait until June when everything starts to come together. Yeah, you made a move down to Alabama. How is that? How has that adjustment been? Are you doing well? Are you happy? What's that like? Yeah, uh, the Alabama weather is nice. Um, the Alabama food is really nice, but yeah. it's not. That southern it's not Yeah, food. you got to get it conducive southern. to have uh, fast swimming. Yeah. Alabama barbecue. Mm. Oh, man, so good. Um, but yeah, Alabama's great. Um, Temperature is nice. With a, the University of Alabama, 
their athlete or athletics is top notch. They just made like 600 million renovate or dollars in renovations, and so the pool got a ridiculous amount of renovations. So we've got an indoor 50 meter, outdoor pool, uh, and then like of course the football. Uh, sorry, the football stadium is awesome, but I don't go there. But I meant to say the weight room was yeah. awesome because it's like it's almost a blessing and a curse to work out at University of Alabama because every time I go to another gym like oh man these these bars stink they're like terrible <laughs> oh they don't even have this machine like how am I supposed to do my workout now you're spoiled you're you're oh, a I weight am. room I'm diva totally now totally spoiled oh, there oh my gosh that is well sprinters live for the weight room anyway yeah. so you know what your equipment's like you're you're probably in the weight room probably more than you're in the pool uh, yeah we do I uh, man our weights are crazy yeah we we do a lot of weights a lot of dry land training um, yeah, I, w eh, but I, I would say it's a pretty close 50-50, yeah. Yeah, speaking about stuff that you do outside of the pool, what is that like? Is that what separates a good swimmer from a great swimmer? Is what you eat, how much you sleep, mm. what you're doing in the weight room? Like, how much does that play into your training regimen right now heading into trials? Oh, it's huge. Um, eating right, making sure I'm getting uh, moderation and... Uh, variation of everything so not too many sweets not if like if any uh, but lots of colors try to have a plate full of cover every day uh, every meal I mean sorry and then sleep always trying to get strive for nine ten hours um, and without like really school or anything it's actually much easier to do that as a pro and it's much easier to take care of myself not as a student like walking to class or doing homework so it, it's a lot easier this way yeah so obviously you know, we want as an athlete for everything to go perfectly leading up to the big championship meet. Right. But you've probably had some experiences where things didn't go exactly so well, like, you know, a little injury or anything like that. Can you talk about how you got over those kinds of things? Um, hmm. I well, mean, just to kind of give you an example, this is what happened to Elizabeth 10 years ago oh my gosh, at a swim me. meet. This was back in the rubber suit. She couldn't She couldn't get her zipper closed. And I, back in the rubber suit. I don't even, oh my gosh, it was I Alex I mean, talk Morrison. about, like, being freaked out before a race. This is, so this is just a pure example of you literally cannot prepare for anything. And I remember I did that relay in my practice suit. She had to do it in her practice suit oh, against geez. all the rubber suit <laughs> yeah. swimmers. I mean, you probably never, you never had anything like that. Did you ever never. have a suit rip when you get up on the block? I've never had a suit rip. Good. Well, actually, I dab. It was the, um... AC, it was either ACCs or NCAAs, but it was right before the 800 freestyle relay. And I was usually wear like a 30 air or something, but I was like, you know, I'll, I'll probably try a 28 because I think maybe a little bit compressive. Uh -oh. And so I put it on, it was ready, and I was like walking out the relays in like 10 minutes. And I kind of do the old like swimmer like, yeah, yeah, yeah. butt squat stretch, yeah. and it just ripped right down oh. the side. And it was like, <gasps> like yeah. what, what do I do? I, I don't have another suit. Uh, Panic, so what do we like, do? Yeah, 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 freaking out, trying to go. I just threw on like an old, or an old racing suit that I had in my bag. And the race went fine, but my heart rate was like jacked up before. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. So I think the lesson here is bring an extra suit. Yeah. And goggles. And, yeah. and goggles because we, we all know sometimes the goggles will snap, the cap will break. Mm -hmm. I mean, you always yeah. got to be prepared because, yeah. I mean, there's it, those oh, things happen. You can't. Yeah. I've also, I've also missed, almost, my, almost missed my race a couple of times. Uh, sophomore year in NCAAs, I was on the massage table. I was right before the 50 free and I was, I was getting worked on and everything. And I kind of just lifted my head up, poked my uh, head up, and I saw uh, Christian Glokomeyev, Caleb, and uh, Simona Billis walk out, and I was like, huh, that's, that looks like the 53. They look like my heat. Oh, my god! And I was like, oh, my God, wait, what time is it? <gasps> like, just flew to the blocks. I was, I, like, didn't have, my, my suit wasn't tied. My rubber things weren't flipped down. Oh, it was bad. You didn't even need warm-up. Your heart rate was already high. You were ready to go. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, it was, a little, yeah. it was a little too bad. It was a bad see, race. you guys at home that are watching, even Olympians mess up yeah. all yes. the time. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a marker on your arm for the next time. Oh, be, yeah. at the, yeah. be on the yeah. blocks at this time. Yeah. That right. is so funny. I can't imagine even NCAA's. You, I, was, I, I had the I had the fear of God. Yeah. I could just like oh. if I missed that event with my coaches. Coach would yeah. absolutely. Those are yeah. a lot of points oh, that yeah. NC State would not yeah. have gotten, and they would right. not have been happy with no, you. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got over that. That's yeah. really cool. Well. Thank you very much. You got the Hunter Freestyle tomorrow. I know that's your baby. Yep. It's going to be real exciting. It's been exciting to watch you kind of. I know you had some difficult years, and now you're bouncing back. You're in the 47 Club, which is 
a good place to be leading into Olympic trials. I know it's going to be really exciting to see how it all turns out. Best of luck to you. Tell Coley hi from me. I know I, I really I miss working with him. It's a pleasure. He's a, one of the best coaches out there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck, Ryan. Are you going to be you. in Des Moines for the next Pro Swim Series? I week? will. That was a, that's like my favorite Pro Swim Series. Yeah. That was the best one of the year Woo! last Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to see Ryan in mm -hmm. Des Moines. You definitely don't want to miss him. We're going to be there for Deck Pass Live. And you definitely want to see Ryan, Olympians, Olympic hopefuls, up and comers. You never know who's going to be shining at this meet. And it's going to be March 5th and 6th in Des Moines on the Olympic Channel and on the NBC Sports Network. And of course, after all the racing, Deck Pass Live is going to be on USASwimming.org. You definitely do not want to miss it. Des Moines, as Ryan said, is a fun place to be, and you definitely don't want to be, don't want to miss it. So I'm excited to go back. We're, we're done here in, in Knoxville. I'm going back home to sunny Arizona. You may be getting on a plane I to Boston. I home tomorrow. <laughs> She's getting yeah. on a plane to, to go to Boston, but not just to go home. You're doing something for USA Swimming Foundation. Please tell us about this. It is so cool, Jeff. So Colin Jones and I are flying to Boston tomorrow morning, and we're going to teach Celtics players how to swim. One of the guys is seven foot five. I'm five foot six, so I'm just picturing a man that is two feet taller yeah. than me in the water. But it's the only time that I'll ever be better than anybody at a sport. Yeah. That's 7.5. Yeah. So I'm excited. It'll be awesome. That will be really fun. And you and Colin will have a lot of fun working with yes. them. That is so fun. I know everybody watching out there is probably like, I wish I could be there to watch this. I want to be there to watch this all take place. I'll, I'll FaceTime you in. I'll be yeah. like, Jeff, look. look That'll be fun. I hope you get there because the weather is looking a little scary. So um, be safe out there, everybody who's dealing with the winter weather out there. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in March in Des Moines. Bye, guys.